Welcome back to the RDK tutorial series. In this video, we'll go through a quick test run by running some of the example programs that we built in the previous video. We'll also be posting more videos in the future where we walk through how to do specific things with the RDK. But for now, this is actually the last video in the RDK tutorial series that you need to watch in order to get started. We've upgraded today. So this is actually a Ryzen 4S that I'm using here, which is a seven degree of freedom adaptive robot, just like the Ryzen 4 we had before. But this one actually also has a built-in six degree of freedom force torque sensor right here at the wrist. I've gone through all the same setup steps that we went through in video one with this robot. So assuming that you've done the same, we should both be ready to get started with the examples. All right, so here I've opened up the example slash build folder within the Flexive RDK directory, which is where you can find the executables for each of the example programs. You'll see that the names have changed a little bit here from the last video. That's actually just because there's been an updated version of the RDK that was released since we filmed the last video. So I have built the new version of the examples here and the names have changed a bit but the build process is just the same as what we went through before. So the first example that I'm gonna run is called Display Robot States. You can see it's the first example listed here under the set of basics examples. So all this is gonna do is it won't move the robot at all. We're just gonna read data from the robot and it'll get printed out to the terminal on a regular interval. And that will verify that we've connected successfully to the robot and that all of our RDK setup work has been successful. So to run this program, I'll type dot slash basics one, display robot states, and then the robot's IP address, which by default is 192.168.2.100, and then my computer's IP address. And this is the IPv4 address for the wired connection that we checked from the settings in the first video. So if you need to go back and double check that, this is the time. For me, that is 192.168.2.110. So I'll provide that and then hit enter. Great, and we can see here that periodically printed out to the terminal, we see current robot states and then the list of variables with a bunch of values. And for now, we won't worry much about what these variables actually represent. But I do wanna show you that if you go online to the Flexive RDK website, and click on API doc, then classes, class list, robot states. All of these variables are defined for you here. So you can go online, check out the API documentation and learn more about what each of these actually represents. For now, all we're concerned with is the fact that we are seeing regular printouts and that we have numbers for each of these variables that tells us that we've connected successfully to the robot and that our setup of the C++ RDK was successful. So I'll go ahead and stop that. And next we can verify that our setup of the Python version of the RDK was successful by running the same program. So I'll switch over to the example pi folder. And I'm gonna run the same corresponding example display robot states. So now that's Python three and then space basics one display robot states dot pi and then the robots IP address again and then my IP address again. Great, so I'll hit enter to run it. Once again, we can see that the robot states are printed out on a regular interval to the terminal. And then we have actual numbers for each of these. That tells us that our setup of Python and the Python RDK was successful. All right, next we'll run the third example in the set of basic examples. This one's called primitive execution. So a primitive is essentially just a basic skill that the robot can carry out. This could be different types of motions, different ways of applying force, or different aspects of the workflow that we might want the robot to go through. These are the building blocks that we can put together in Flexive Elements, which is the drag and drop interface I mentioned previously, in order to define a task for the robot. Of course, we can also call these primitives directly from the RDK, which is what we'll see in this example. But before we run it, I want to point out that Flexive actually provides a large library of primitives that you can run. And these are documented online in the Flexive Primitives Manual at flexive.com primitives. We're adding to this all the time, and most all of these primitives take parameters that the user can specify in order to customize the behavior. 
So be sure to check out this page for more information about what these primitives do and how you can tailor them to your needs. All right, now taking a closer look at the code for this example, we can see here that first we put the mode to primitive execution, and then we have the robot execute a home primitive, which will just move it to its home position. And then we'll do three other types of motions. These motions might all look the same when we watch the robot move, but the difference is how they're specified. The first is a motion defined in terms of the angles of each of the joints. And the second is a motion of the end of the robot arm specified relative to the location of the base of the arm. And lastly, we'll see a motion of the end of the arm specified relative to its own initial position. So to run this, I will go back to the terminal and type dot slash basics three primitive execution, and then again, provide the robot's IP address and my IP address. Okay, and when I hit enter, we will see it first move to the home position. And then we see one motion, another motion, carried over into the last motion, and then one more. So I won't worry about the details of how these motions differ, but you can take a look at the code and take a look through the documentation online. And it should give you a great start at understanding the different ways that you can specify motion for the robot. All right, next we'll run the fourth example from the set of basics. This one's called plan execution. So a plan is a pre-written script that the robot can execute. It's comprised of different primitives connected together in whatever way you might choose in order to define the workflow for the robot. So suppose that you created a plan in Flexive Elements. If you've assigned it to the robot, meaning just that it's been saved to the control box, then we can run it directly from the RDK. This is a great way to combine the convenience of the Flexive Elements drag and drop interface with the power and flexibility of the RDK. For example, you could create the plan in Elements and then use the RDK to customize the way that data is read and recorded from the robot. So to run this example, I will type dot slash basics for plan execution, then again provide the robot IP address and mine. And when I run this, you'll see that we're prompted with a few options. I'm going to type one and hit enter to show a list of the available plans. And then I will hit two so that I can run one of these plans by specifying its index. Here, I will run a demo of the robot's floating mode. So I'll type 26 and hit enter. And then the robot now is in a mode where it's counteracting the force of gravity. So it floats in place but otherwise its behavior is compliant, which means that it doesn't provide too much resistance to me moving it around. Again, this is just a demo. If you wanna be able to make the robot feel light and responsive like this to external forces, you need to have highly accurate torque sensors that you read at a high rate. So after this, I'll go ahead and quit this plan, and then I will send the robot back to the home pose by running the plan execution demo again and running the home plan. All right, now I'll quickly show one more example. This one involves zeroing the force torque sensor at the end of the arm. This six degree of freedom force torque sensor is a highly sensitive instrument that's very helpful for enhancing force control precision. However, in order to make use of it, we wanna make sure that it's zeroed properly. This takes only a second, and it's a good idea to do this anytime we change the tool that we're using or are about to begin a fine manipulation task. In order to see the difference, I'll run display robot states before and after zeroing the sensor. So for this, as before, I will type dot slash basics one, display robot states, and then the robot's IP address, and then my own. And I'll let this print out a few times. Great, okay, so if we take a look at the last three variables in each printout here, these have to do with the force torque sensor readings. And we can see that the values here are non-zero. 
So now I will run dot slash basics five, zero force torque sensors. And again, the robot's IP address and my own. All right, as I mentioned, that process takes only a moment. It's already done. And now I will rerun display robot states. And now if we take a look at the final readings in each printout, we can see that they are very nearly zero, which indicates that the zeroing of the sensor was successful. As a brief preview, you might have noticed that we needed to provide the robot IP address as well as our own IP address each time we wanted to run an RDK plan. But we've streamlined this process in an upcoming release of the RDK, and it will no longer be necessary. So for more information about updates to the RDK in general, again, be sure to check out the manual online. And if you're interested in the details, you can click Release Notes here, and it'll link to the Release Notes page on the GitHub, where you can find further information about the updates that we've made. OK, those are all the examples that we'll go through for now. But the RDK comes with a number of other examples as well. By looking through the code for each of them, as well as consulting the API documentation and the RDK manual, you should be able to learn a lot about how to use the RDK for a wide variety of different applications. I hope you've found this video series helpful. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or reach out to us directly if you have any questions. And we've just scratched the surface here. There are a number of other capabilities and control modes that we haven't even gotten to yet. So we'll be adding more RDK tutorial videos in the future, showing off these additional capabilities and providing additional example projects. So be sure to stay tuned for that.